Hey guys, Rick here from Rated R Photography, and today my chair is too high. There we go. Hey guys, this is the quick tip this time. Go to Library Window, and then once you have it over in Lightroom, all I need is like, you know, like, you know, when I bought it. This photo, I learned well, something because I got the email going through the 7th Library, 2.8 ISR, and I want to do my experience. For mature audiences, the following has been rated R. So, hey guys, I know I look a little funny, still missing some teeth here after the whole car crash thing. Not dead though, so we're gonna keep working. So, today we're talking about the best part about being a photographer, and that is just getting invited to go hang out with pretty girls. Let's be honest. So, let's go over to the computer here and check out some sweet stuff I did the other day. So, this is a photo shoot I did with a group of girls known as the Static Queens. That's a little car group. And uh, yeah, they always have me out to go shoot, and I find it fun because they're all super sweet. And it's, well, I'm not going to say no to this kind of thing. So here is what we shot. I'll show you some befores and afters of certain shots. Actually, let's, uh, let's do the full before and afters. Why not? So all I'm doing here is I'm actually hitting command A to select all my shots and I can hit S and it's stacking. Cause I always have my befores as one layer or sorry, as one file and my afters as another. Since when I bounce them to Photoshop, it actually makes the second file anyways. And then I usually go and reset the first file so I can kind of compare and contrast when I bring it back to Lightroom to make any kind of final adjustments. So let's start, uh, how do I do this? Okay, let's go, we'll kind of bounce around. So this is a girl named Christina's, 350 said, before, after. Boom, kind of muted the colors. You'll notice that's kind of the vibe of this day. I Photoshop cloned out some stuff there, like a little bit of that Jetta in the corner and the other little Mazda there. You make it a little less distracting, but overall, not a super drastic shot. Next up is a Volkswagen Jolf. That's right, it's a Jolf. It's a Volkswagen Golf with a Jetta front end. Kind of interesting. Before, after, seems to be cropped in a little tighter. Added some color to it, kind of gave it a mood it didn't really have. Next up, boom, another Volkswagen. We're flying already. This one is a regular old GTI, and the edit of it is not that drastic. Straightened out, cloned out the people that are over in the corner there. And overall, just again, made it kind of pop. Next up, another Volkswagen Golf. There's kind of a trend here going. And this one's nice because these wheels are a really interesting color, and that truck that just happened to be in the background there is the same color. So in the edit of it, boom, I just cranked up even more of that color. Added some in the sky, added some just everywhere I could. Just trying to make stuff happen. Interior of that same car, same color. The girl clearly likes it. Boom, there's the edit. Cropped in a little bit tighter. I've started doing crops like this. This is a 4x5 or an 8x10 crop because that is the tallest Instagram will let you go vertically. So when you post a shot that is a 4x5, it is the biggest possible thing when someone's scrolling through their feet. Kind of cool. One of the other photographers there, a guy named Alex Turnbull. You'll see him on this show later on. And that is his R32. Or sorry, R33. I misspoke. He wishes he had R32. Anyways, R33 before and after. Same thing. Straightened it out. Play with the hues. Really, to this one was all about adding mood. As you can see, the lighting was nothing special in any of these shots. We're dealing with, you know, what? let's find the time of day here in the metadata. Uh, do, 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 do. 10 a.m. ish. That sounds about right. Definitely not 7. Oh, I think my camera might be out of calibration there because it was not 7 a.m. Anyway, 10 sounds about right. Oh, that's 10.07.37, isn't it? Yeah, 10.09. So we're at 10 a.m. So it's nothing amazing. We don't have golden hour or anything. We're just kind of working with what's there. So I was kind of waiting until clouds would come over to soften the light. That's why you'll notice there's no really harsh shadows in these shots. This one was a great one. The lighting just happened to kind of spotlight that jet or that golf story in a little way. So, bam, there's the edit. You'll notice the red car in front of it disappears. It's now a black car. There's a bit of a story behind that, but basically that was just too distracting. Having that extra red drew your eyes away from this green tint that is kind of really the, the main focus of that car there. And then I thought adding in the extra bronze on the uh, pavement there. Sorry, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Woo! Anyways, I thought adding in that extra bronze really created a cool color contrast. Next up, 350Z front tire. Boom! Not much from that. You can see it's literally just brightening things up. But again, you can see I'm waiting until clouds come so there's no super harsh shadow. Trying to work with the light I have. As always, there's an animal in the mix. This is a super cute puppy. I did not catch his name. And the edit of it I'm actually really proud of, which is right there. 
really warmed it up, got a proper white balance of this one. The camera metered it wrong. It's a little bit too blue or white. You want a little bit of yellow in there to really make that brown dog look brown. Love that guy. Anyways, next up, one of the best smallest girls in the world. This is Alexis Borman. That is her little jolf. And there is the edit on that one. She didn't really, she wasn't really planning on posing. I just kind of snapped this one. This is more of a behind the scenes almost kind of one. I wasn't all about doing the uh, the models with the car kind of thing. There was another guy kind of taking care of that. That said, I did do this one of her and the edit of it. Bam. You can see again, we just bring up some of the shadows there. Makes it so you can actually see her. This is where you can see the lights getting harsher. So we're just trying to fight it to get it better. This one I did not edit. I just think it's hilarious. So there it is. Next up, 350Z again, edited on this one, straightened out, cloned out the slightly crooked license plate that was driving me slightly insane, and added in a little bit of a warmth over on this corner. Overall, a lot of the edits on this are a little bit subtle. It took me a while to pull all these off, but they're not drastic. My good buddy Alex, that's actually the after. There's the before. I happened to shoot this in a vertical, but decided against it. So there's the crop version of that. Fun fact, in the past three months, both Alex and I have almost died in accidents, but we're unkillable. Another before, another after there. Not a super drastic edit. This was, we moved to another spot, and I found this little bit around the corner. It was fully shaded. So by this point, it's, you know, 11. We're getting to just high noon terribleness. So shade was the thing to do. Speaking of which, there's another wider angle, the same one. You can see we're fully in the shade there. And the edit of this is super drastic. I got rid of all the stuff going on in this building, added it in so it would just kind of fade away into nothing. So there's a big white brush, basically, that's gone up there. and just creates this kind of dystopian fade-off, which I really think is cool. This one is hilarious. This is a little... I, I like doing these kinds of shots, but I ended up not keeping this one edited. That said, I did put in tiny alexis actually we've started to use this for promotional materials for my work it's that great next up girl named sam's jetta beautiful paint on this car in a really nice spot the thing that pissed me off to no extent about this photograph was this line here is kind of straight in mine it's a little bit crooked but the car is crooked in the other way this is going up this is going down kind of thing so in the photoshop version the car is flat you can see i twisted it a little bit and i actually cranked the edge of the Foley's candies thing. So you can see the sign is still slightly crooked and the board's kind of doubled up over here. I didn't do a perfect job, but at least all the lines are straight. And again, with the edit, I pulled the reds out of the reflection here because this is just all the red building around reflecting in the paint, but the car is blue. So I really just grabbed a huge saturation layer, grabbed that pink, dragged it till it was blue and then masked it in where I wanted it. I left it on the windows though, because I thought it looked a little bit more natural, being that it, you know, people obviously seeing this can see there's red around, it's in the frame. Still not crazy about that red in the window. I, maybe I should have done a multiple polarizer turn to ditch it, but I didn't. There's the file I had. There's what I was able to pull off with it. The leader of these girls was a girl named, or sorry, a girl named Brittany. Bam, there's the edit of her nice little daily there. Really sweet story behind this car. I'm not going to get into it, but it means a lot to her, and it's actually really nice too. Heading over to the next Volkswagen again, before, after, tightened it up, a little bit of a dramatic edit on that one, just kind of adding contrast, adding clarity to the cars too is a trick I use fairly often. Another little behind the scenes one. These are the girls themselves. That's Brittany with the white car, Tiny Alexis, and the girls with the 50s there, Christine. After of that one, just cropped in. You'll actually notice that there are guys here, somebody's boyfriend, somebody's boyfriend, but their group is called the Static Queens, so I photoshopped the shit out of those guys and made them disappear. I actually photoshopped out this guy named Lance. He's awesome. And then cropped anyway. So I went through all the trouble of clone stamping Lance out. But I really did delete Justin. Again, nice guys. Please don't fight me. But you're not girls, so I got you out of the girl shots. Before the 350Z again, I like to use shooting through stuff to try to add some drama. You probably noticed that way earlier on. All of these shots are through bushes and stuff because it adds a tone it adds a texture so with the shots of that 3 you said there that said i didn't like the texture of having this ford focus here and this golf again so crop in really changes the entire vibe of that it's not my favorite edit i've done it's not my favorite file to work with but again that's what i was able to do with it group shot of the girls a little bit too wide so i just tightened it up and added some drama to it 
There you have it with a bit of extra clarity on the pavement. You make the cars pop. Added in a bit of a sun fade that comes in through that corner there because it, there is a corner. The light's coming through there and the shadow's lined up. So I added a little bit of fake sun. Another one of the 350 there. Just found it in a nice place. So slightly dramatic edit on that one. I guess it's kind of warming it up, adding some more shadows. Again, it's always just about creating more mood and interest. Group shot of the three of them. Edit of it. That one's pretty dramatic. It's a little bit contrasty, actually. You know what? Looking at it again, what we're going to do, we're going to grab the blue channel, and we're going to pull some blues out, because that blue car is way too blue. And there. See, these things are never done. This is another reason I like making these videos, is it kind of forces me to take another look, even then the contrast might be a little bit high. So let's re- uh, There we go. Never done. I got learned when to quit. So the before and the final after on that. Up next, fantastic lady named Pam showed up with her NSX. Before, after on that. Not a very dramatic edit, just making the red a little more red and a little more contrast, making that tire pop, you know, very subtle things. Another group shot with Pam, everybody's staring at Pam. Cropped it in a little bit tighter, added some contrast. You can see the light really is getting bad now. We're at noon. Those shadows are harsh and defined. So, how do you fight that? You get on the road. I'm now hanging out of a Mazda. Before, after, I just ditched the uh, the sun flare that was happening on her hood. And added some tone. Added a lot more yellow, a lot more blue, a lot more red. Just to give it some saturation. Again, might be a little bit high. Let's look at it. If we bring it down a little bit, can it... Can it be improved upon? Yeah, maybe around there. And if we pull some yellow out. See? There's always more to do. There we go. Pulling out some colors here. And let's crank some luminances around. That might... There we go. Can save some stuff too. It's all about just knowing what these sliders, sliders do, sorry, by playing with them so much so that when you see something you don't like, you know how to fix it. So I don't like the sky. I know that's in the blue channel. We can just kind of tweak. This photo looks pretty processed. Like, obviously, there's the original on it versus this hyper edit. But I think these kind of edits have their place, and they can be really cool. Here's a little bit more subtle of one. This is kind of the more, you know, desktop wallpaper kind of vibe. Alexis is Jolf again. And the edit just straightened out, cranked up the tones a little bit. Again, the shadows, you know, what, what can you do about it? This was a quick little snapshot that I actually really dug, shooting up at 5.6 because it's so bright outside. And just cropped in tighter. I just like the fact that it shows her in her car. I wish I had focused on the car instead of her in this shot because at 5.6, you wouldn't notice that she would be blurry, but you do notice that the car is blurry. But again, I'm proud of the shot still. And my favorite one of the day is actually this very last one, another roller. And there's the shot there. Again, just added tons of drama, tons of everything just to make it dramatic. That's it. So there you have it. That's it. It was kind of a lightning round of before and afters this time. No need to dwell on it. I'll show you way more editing videos, way more behind the scenes stuff. I got some cool ideas coming up here with a little bit more vloggy style content, kind of bringing you along the shoots, showing you more of the editing process. But for now, that was before and after. I've been Rick. You've been wonderful. And I will see you in the next video. Later.